So uh, obesity, obesity, every time we hear it, uh, people will just say, usually it's referred in a local parlance, you say a robo and all that, but doctor, mm -hmm. medical parlance, get us up to speed with what do we really mean when we see obesity? Okay. Obesity is defined is when someone has excessive fat accumulation that can affect his or her health. So anybody that has excessive fats that can affect health is referred to as being obese. There's also an important um, aspect of it um, because a lot of people, when I say um, excess fat, they might just say, okay, I'm not, I don't have excess fat. There's also the issue of being overweight, which is also um, a risk factor for many health conditions. And it's very important to our discussion because overweight is what a lot of people are in right now. And it usually leads to obesity. Mm. So um, there is something we call a, a body mass index, BMI, which is just a simple index that is used to classify being overweight, overweight and obese in adults. So the BMI is a simple index and it's calculated using a person's weight and height. So um, a person's weight in kilograms divided by a person's height in meters square can give you what your body mass index is. And if your body mass index is above 25, when you do that measurement using um, your weight and your height in meters square, if it's above 25, you are regarded as being overweight. While if it is above 30, you are regarded as being obese. So that's just a, for an introduction. You see, when you were raising, given the definition of obesity, as soon as you said that, I looked at I said, well, okay, seemed like I'm not supposed to be in this class. And then you quickly burst the bubble. So you talked about weight. And then I said, okay, it looks like I'm part of this conversation back again. So yeah, yeah we are. Mm -hmm. Thanks for setting that pace. But again, that leads us to the conversation of if one falls into this category of overweight and being obese. Now let's look at causes and the risk factor that one is now exposed to. And so we mm -hmm. begin to understand the real pictures we're painting this morning okay um first and foremost it's just good to know that being overweight and obese is a very how i put it is a modern occurrence so you mentioned earlier that it started the who classified it as being a public health problem since 1975 or thereabouts so before then it was on head of it was not a problem so the people that were obese or overweight were less than one percent but there has been like a an increase, more than a fourfold, more than triple increase in overweight and obesity since 1975. So it it's it's we when we are talking about the cost, it's more linked to things like um um we can say in, improvement in development, improvements in food. You know, people having much more money to spend. However, they're not spending it right. So. Um, there's now an increased intake of energy-dense foods that are high in fats and sugars. Things like pizzas, burgers, chips, fried fried foods, and so a lot of then a lot of um on refined sugars. People taking a lot of Coke, fan. Okay, let me not call any brand names. A lot of mm. soda, <laughs> yeah. soda, sweetened soda. You know. We call it um, affluence, more affluent lifestyle. And then being coupled with what we call a sedentary lifestyle, physical inactivity, more people taking their cars, more people not wanting to walk. And then the kind of work we do, like you, you're working, you're always sitting down most of the time. A lot of big executives in the offices with their laptops, your phones. So more of sedentary lifestyle and eating a lot of food that are not healthy for you contributes to um, obesity and overweight. So even right now, we find out that even though it's rising, it's rising more in the urban areas, in the urban areas compared to the rural areas. Because in the rural areas, they're still doing their farm work. They're still being active. They do not have as much access to a lot of refined foods, a lot of um, the so-called pizzas and noodles and so so on. So those are some of the causes, the major causes of overweight and obesity.
Okay, uh, that in itself leads us to you. You mentioned the like the consumption pattern has been one of the core factors responsible. But mm -hmm. are there any play? Is there any place for every D three? Like you see, look, some persons will tell you, "Just leave me." It's in the family. It runs. We can't escape it. Yes, yes. So there's a role for genetics to play. We know that some people have a tendency to add weight faster. However. We cannot also just say, okay, it's in my family and there's nothing I can do about it. No, you, there's also a role to play in terms of your lifestyle. I know people that have it in their family, they tend to be big, but because they know they have that um, tendency, they put in more effort to exercise, to watch what they eat. So even if it's genetic, you have it in the family, that propensity to add weight, you still have a personal responsibility not to enable it by the food you eat and your lifestyle. So if you are able to um, watch what you eat, to eat healthy and exercise, you will not be overweight or uh, obese, despite the fact that it may be genetic or you may have it in your family. So there's still a huge personal responsibility involved. All right, Doctor, I will, we'll get back to you shortly, but I also got this balance here in the studio where we've got a plus-size fitness trainer in the studio here, Ifi and Nadu. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need to get to her to help us understand some of the, in trying to work with people who would come in to approach you or consult you, uh, what are the general misconceptions they've got about being obese and how you try to talk them to accept it first and then before you start working with them? Okay, so um, I would like to... Well, first of all, I agree with Doctor about some of the things she said about obesity. Um, when you say uh, obesity runs in the family or being big runs in the family, most of the time it's because of the lifestyle. Not even it's not necessarily genetics. It's the lifestyle of the family because you you tend to um, follow the lifestyle of your family yeah. and then you get to continue with it. So. Um, because no one runs in your family, that is why obesity runs in your family. So, so that's that's one of okay. the things. Um, as for um people who come for say fitness adv advice as obese people, what I tell them first of all is watch what you're eating. I mean, the doctor has said all of that. Watch what you're eating. There's too much refined foods. There's too much processed foods. Things with sugar, and then we don't move enough. We don't move enough move at least 30 minutes, uh, try to change the things that you're doing, not sitting down all the time. There are some people that sit down at home, as much as getting the remote, they'll tell someone to go and do it for them, you know, or getting their bags from the step, from uh, the room upstairs, move as much as, as much as you can. 30 minutes a day is more than enough. Is uh, maybe not more than enough, or some people it's more than enough, but 30 minutes a day being active, can make that difference. So this also in itself would call for some real life experiences as you you get to work with people at yeah. plus size as a fitness trainer and knowing that what's some of those experiences that you've ex gotten so far to change people's you know situation from being obese and overweight. So when, when you talk about experience, how, how do you have... When people come to you and you get to, because some persons will tell you, no matter how hard I do this, forget it this thing would where would it is it that it leaves the body it's still in the body how do you talk so it, it, it's, it's about it's about your mindset it's about your mindset if you change that mindset of okay i can't do this or you know it's already inside me and you know it can't change then you're already stifling yourself you're already killing your um your ability to do that thing but once you change your mindset about doing something or facing something then you're you're more than halfway through that challenge you know so it, 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 it's a mind shift thing. So when you look at it as not a, if you look at it as, as it's not a challenge, but something to improve you, so for something to change you, then all that excuse, because I, I see them as excuses, you know, all that excuse will not come up. So it's a mindset thing. Now, still talking about mindset and knowing that Dr. Anira Jurisha had mentioned something when she talked about being overweight what would you call for you an overweight person and how do people you get them to begin to deal with some of this body shaming trauma and all of that they face even as they try to get out of that situation from the standpoint of one dealing with people like that okay so you know you've already said one dealing with people like that 
And when you mentioned, when you, you, you know, you introduced me, you called me plus size fitness trainer. Yes. And that is exactly what I am. So when people see me, they don't see fitness. So people generally, like, when, when, when doctor was, um, um, what, um, describing overweight or obese, she said something, she said, when the fat is ex excess fat, that would affect their health. So there are some people that are overweight, to be honest, there are some people that are overweight, but the fat in their bodies do not affect their health. Because I mean, I'm, I'm African. And if you see me, you, what you'll see first of all is a big person. But when you, when I do my, when you do your medicals and you check um, the fat around your heart and your vital organs, and it's not affecting your health, then you're good to go. So some people, yes, they might be overweight, but they haven't done those tests to know whether, oh, um, I am not fit or I'm fit. And then they just condemn themselves because they are overweight. But if it's not affecting your health, then you don't have any excuse not to try and get fit. And even if you do have an excuse, you shouldn't because everyone should get fit. It is still Lagos Talks on Smooth 98.1 FM. The conversation today centers around obesity and all you need to know, the professionals here, we're speaking with a doctor and a plus size fitness trainer, helping us to shed more light in it. But when we come on the other side, I'll be going over to speak with doctor uh, to help us understand, really, is fat a bad thing? Thing to have in the body. I like to know about that. But I see the phone line already. I see it buzzing already. So, but just let you know, yes, you already, this is an old timer coming on. But you can give us a call after now on 01 448 9981. The number once again is 01 448 9981 will be to get the calls. And then we'll read WhatsApp messages on 0809. 444-0981. We're smooth 98.1 FM. So come back shortly. Mm -hmm. Mm And, and so for me, when you talk, because you raised the African, I hope you can hear us, doctor. Yes, I can. Okay. So because when you were, you, you said, yes, you were African. So what is this pressure about? So it, it's for me, I take another, there's another tone of, look, there's a certain way that beauty standards or physique should not be measured in the same way across yes. races. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. Yes. I just wanted to get. Because I mean, not every, I mean, when you look at physiology, not everybody is, is designed the same way. Yeah. There are some people, there are some people that are endomorphs, ectomorphs. I'm sure Dr. knows about that. People carry their fat distribution in different ways. Some people don't have as much fat as other people. So you can't classify everybody with one size. Where so. do you where do you now? So we're back, Dr. Okay. We'll come back. Don't worry, we're coming back. We're smooth, 98.1 FM. It's still Legal Talks, 981, and we're getting the conversation going. Obesity, all you need to know. Well, some countries have already seen it as a public health situation, and they need to do something about it. Example, the UK, the field. Look, you know what? There should even be a week to create awareness about it. But for some persons, they'll still say, well, hmm, like they say in the common parlance, now, fat, I fat, no kill person. But <laughs> let's go back over. I was going to raise this question with you, Dr. Anira, where you talked about, I was going to ask, fat, really, mm -hmm. what's the use of fat in one's body? Really, what's used? Does its role it plays in the human physiology? Okay. Um, fat is not all bad. We actually need fat. If you remember your biology or something, they will tell you classes, nutrients, we have carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and oils. So not fat is not totally bad. We have some good fat. Fat is a source of energy. We need fat as a source of energy to do our work. It can provide structure to the membrane of the cell in our body. 
um, there are some vitamins, we call them the fat soluble vitamins, like the vitamins A, D, E, and K, can only be absorbed from the food in the presence of fats. We have the omega-3 fatty acids that help in maintaining our brain health, you know. So fat can have some um, level of, they, we need them as well. However, there are different types of fat. We have good fat and we have bad fats. So we have fats which we call saturated fats. Those are the ones that um, are not good for us. And they can accumulate in places like our hearts, our blood vessels, and leads to um, our muscles and all that, and leads to health conditions. So, for example, um, if, too much, if there are too much fat in your blood vessels, the bad fat, it can lead to things like atherosclerosis, where it blocks the flow of blood in your vein, leading to strokes. It can lead to um, cause cardiovascular disease, heart disease, you know. So it can lead to gallbladder disease. It can lead to diabetes. So it's there needs to be a balance between good fat and bad fat. So um, good fat are fats you find in vegetable oils like um, um, soya, olive oil, fats that you get from vegetables are good fats, which the body needs. Then bad fats are fats we get from animal sources. Those ones are bad fat. And um, I, the fitness um, um, coach was talking about, when we talk about BMI, the um, body mass index, and it just tells you you're overweight. Sometimes, some people can be overweight, but their fat distribution is not in areas that are harmful to health. So also... Um, we need to balance that with um, taking measurements of your body, the fat in certain areas of your body. Fat in the abdominal region, like in your abdomen, your tummy, is is very is not good. It's dangerous. In fact, that is even worse. So there are some people that their um, body mass index might be within the normal range, but they have fat in their abdomen. They have fat in their arms. So that fat is not good. So yeah, so fats generally, but that's what is more common, that bad fats. And it can lead to a lot, of, like I've said, it can lead to a lot of um, cardiovascular diseases, it can lead to arthritis, your muscles, and other things. So that's why we talk so much about fats. So I, I get back, I'll go back to Ify. Ify, before we, there was this submission you made about where you can find all of this fat, and then you, there was a point you touched about being African and, you know, so is it really fair to classify people based on uh, a certain ideology of what beauty or what is healthy, a physique should look like knowing that as Africans, the distribution of the fat and also taking from what doctors talked about, uh, you might we have this propensity to have it being blessed at, in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to speak to that. I mean, I, I don't know what else you want me to say because you and doctor have already said it. Um, there are some people that their fat distribution does not in any way necessarily affect their health. So if you're if you're talking about say a very curvy woman with you know a bigger bottom, right? It doesn't necessarily. It might not necessarily affect her you know, her health, because maybe the distribution is not around her heart or her um, vital organs or her abdomen. So you're not looking at um, uh, the fat distribution affecting her in any way or affecting him in any way. So, um, and I, I think the doctor had already said, you know, using the BMI is just, is just standard, but they don't use it for, you don't use it across, you know, across board because you have to see that there are some people who are not, overweight but they have um fat in their vital organs because they're not overweight doesn't mean they're healthy so that you should we should be looking at you know things like that also yeah uh it looks like a fine place we've got a call waiting this while so let's go over there and hear what they have to say good morning to you name and location good good morning your name and location please I'm well, thank you.
ethnicities, whatever. It's always the black race. If you check America, it's always the black man or black woman. They have a tendency to be this or that. So if they are from that water, I am very, very wary of We are African. Yes, we go. We are not inferior in any way to anybody. Right? So anyway, I agree with what the oh, uh, the, the cotton, what the studio and the doctor is saying. Having fat in the wrong area would be what would possibly lead to maybe death or maybe disability or whatever. I said, no, as, as I said, I'm not a very big time in terms of, um, you know, but, with, um, but I understand that you can be a climate, whatever, and yet you could be that big. You could be a shock uh, kind of patient. And what are you? Also, you know, sometimes I think that what the white man can't have or doesn't have it goes about not uh, building down. You see an average North Science black woman, she is seen to be, well, as, as it's been already established by a person, and as I've read white, I may not be in, in the medic, but I've read white to the point that I deserve my being a doctor anywhere, anywhere, anytime. It's a case of you having part in the right places will always be good enough for you. But they go to the point of making it look as if once you're of this race, you are just going to be, you are condemned to be that this or that. And I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that. I'm not, as I said, Thank you. That's Dr. Moses making his point now. So uh, that returns me to Dr. Annie uh, this morning. The question before you is, because we've mentioned overweight, can we mm -hmm. also speak of this? If there's a possibility of overweight, then there is underweight. Speak to Definitely. that too. Okay, yes. So um, in the malnutrition spectrum, malnutrition, when you're not getting enough, malnutrition is when there's an imbalance in the nutrients you need for health. So there's a spectrum. We have overweight and we have underweight overweight is when it's excessive too much of everything is bad and then it cannot affect health underweight is when it is not enough for you to um, carry out your daily your physiological activities that your body needs so um using the um body mass index as well underweight is defined as a, a weight over height weight divided by height of less than 18.5 so when it's less than 18.5, you say it is underweight. And um, here in Africa, we are experiencing what we call a double burden of underweight and overweight. You know that um, underweight is mostly caused by not having enough food to eat. And even some people can have enough food to eat, but not having food, not having food that are rich in certain nutrients, essential nutrients that you need for health. So um here in um, Africa, in Nigeria, we have a lot of poor people that do not have access to food, good food, nourishing food, especially children. It's very rampant in children less than five years old, where we now see things like kwashioko, marasmus, being small for age, their weight is small for their age, their height is small for their age. So yes, undernutrition can also um, um, occur. It is also very, um, very, very, very common especially among children. But you also find it in adolescents, young girls who have been body shamed. And so they want to be, because society now says, oh, you have to be a certain um, body type to be beautiful. And so they now induce um, this undernutrition by, we talk about bulimia, anorexia, they start inducing vomiting and all that, trying to look a certain way. So um, undernutrition is a big problem, but it's very big among our children. It is affecting our children's growth. It, it leads them to things like um, a lot. They are more prone to diseases, infections when they're undernourished, especially children less than five years. That is another is another gist. Is another topic, big topic, which mm -hmm. can take another one hour, you know. Yeah. And it, it happens when mothers are not giving children the right foods to eat. A lot of noodles now. A lot of, uh, I don't know, I say mom, and a, a, ba a child of one year is already taking um, this, I don't want to call any drink. But Just some drinks, yeah. 
Yes, nine months old baby is drinking. Dr- Why you should be giving a child milk? They are giving the child. Ah, I, I, I saw a mom. She was giving the, the baby was crying and gave her gave the child. I won't call the name. And the child and then biscuits. What was that? <laughs> so mm-hmm. and that would okay. So that would lead to undernutrition, but it also leads to when a child is also taking a lot of all these biscuits, a lot of all these sweetened beverages, a lot of pizza, a lot of noodles. You are also pushing, you are giving the child, you are pumping the child with a lot of energy that can, and fat, that can make the child go into obesity while still lacking essential nutrients. And we're having that double burden now in Africa, where you are seeing children that are malnourished, undernutrition, and then another set overnourished. So you can be rich and wealthy, and your child is still malnourished because the child either has excess um nutrients that is leading to obesity or the child is not underweight but is lacking certain nutrients that the child needs all right thank you doctor we're we're at that that point once again where we would let you wait and we'll begin to drift into the psychological impact i'll get to you doctor for that one how you begin to talk people to begin to accept certain situations to make the decision they need for a healthy lifestyle change that will be after now it's still legos talks on smooth 98.1 fm station we'll be right back future forward banking I think you're struggling with the phone line. Yeah. So when you want to hear whatever is coming from you, you simply no. Okay. You don't have to. Just simply uh, press okay. Q. Okay. And if you want anyone here to mm-hmm. hear, simply press Q. Okay. So you don't need to keep, and then you turn this on, you hear it from there. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks, you. Appreciate it. Um, We're smooth, 98.1 FM. It's time to get back into the conversation. 26 minutes before it's up, 10 o'clock, and let's get into obesity. All you need to know so far, uh, Dr. Andy Ray, the next thing is between adults and children, who do mm-hmm. you get to see, who are more vulnerable to you know suffer most from this condition we're talking about? Okay, um, both both but the i am very more concerned with children because a child um is like an empty canvas what you paint on that child is what that child will follow so children are more sensitive to the effects of nutrition so um a growing child for example a child that was just weaned off breast milk that does not get the right nutrients mm. and becomes undernourished can suffer brain damage can will not grow as well as he should can limit um at the school performance and also on the other hand when a child is being pumped with a lot of high energy unhealthy food you're also teaching that child how to eat children learn everything when they are small so you're also grooming an adult that will be obese so the habits they acquire when they are when they are young follows them, and also if they are they they are exposed to unhealthy food when they are young, they now have risk factors for diseases. Oh, Doctor Anira, you have to get to reconnect once again. We lost that connection, but it's still Lagos Talks nine eight one on smooth ninety eight point one FM. While we're waiting for our connection to stabilize. 
Talk us through when they now present to you as, you know, to consult a plus size uh, fitness trainer, help me, what do we need to do? Most persons want to get to shed weight, but are they really willing to put in the work and make that sacrifice in terms of lifestyle changes when you see them? So that, that that's that's a question you would have to ask them. Because if you are not ready to make that sacrifice, then you are not ready to change. You are not ready to uh, reverse whatever it is that is bringing you to that place. And and the thing is, the fact that you have you have come to seek for um, help, then you should be willing to make that change. But there's in addition to that, there's also this cultural aspect, of society influencing body weight and what steps can be taken. Uh, for example, in some cultures, if a woman is getting ready to go to be married and all that. Uh, there's expected to be, we should see it. I mean, it should show. The fat, fat new room. And yeah, the it should show in places and it must look yeah. healthy. And for us, now there's a conception of, maybe now it's changing with all of this awareness that, I mean, if, if a man is healthy and is wealthy, I mean, let it show. It, it should show in other ways, not, not in you being unhealthy. Because, you know... So, it, so, some people will see a man with a pot belly uh -huh. and dad, he's living well. No, the doctor has already said it. If your if your if your weight waist circumference is um more than I think 30 for men, is that 30 or 35 for, for men, then you're not you're not healthy. You're not that's not a show of affluence because you are at risk of diabetes. So you know, affluence is not by how big you look, it's it's how it should be how well you are. You know how well you are. You should be able to you know, check, do your medical checks regularly. You know, eat healthy, eat the best of the healthy foods, not processed or anything. That should show how affluent you are, not by the size of your your waist or your belly. Doctor Anira, you talked about being concerned about children because it is what we by raising them we teach them what they would learn to accept when they grow up because they're blank canvases mm -hmm. but between men and women who are more vulnerable to this being overweight right now it's equal it's equal but women tend to have more fat composition white men tend to have more muscle so yes um women slightly more slightly more but it's equal is why, equal. If, if why, why is that? It, could there be something in the anatomy that leads to that gives them this advantage? If I may call it that. Yes, a man's body build is different. A man has more muscle. A woman has more fat. You know, for the curves. So yes, yeah. W women, um, our body composition is made up of more fat than muscle normally. Yeah. While for the men, it's made up of more muscle than fat. However, however, lifestyle plays a role. If a man does not eat what he's supposed to eat, he will have fat, a lot of fat. So right now, if you look at the data, is um for women, it's slightly more. Women are slight have slightly more obesity than men, maybe like one or two percent more. Mm -hmm. So it's almost equal. So I was speak I was asking uh, Dr. Anadu, um the fitness trainer a while ago now what mm -hmm. in terms of people find exercise is a very painful regimen to try yeah. to stick to. So most often than not it seems like there is if we can wait for that there is also the option in medical in the medical field now where fats can also be taken care of. I'd like you to explore mm -hmm. this and how effective it is if people go through that. Um, as much as possible, we like, to, I am a public health physician. We like to preach a healthy lifestyle, something that is sustainable. So even if you go and do surgery and take out fat, but you continue to eat unhealthy, the fat will come back. It will come back. <laughs> so the emphasis is, um, teach people to eat healthy, to live a healthy lifestyle that they can sustain. So, um, exercise. Being sometimes beyond going to the gym, which is um good, your everyday activity should be planned such that activity is part of your lifestyle. You walk. So instead of taking a car every time, walk. Brisk walking is exercise. Instead of cycling, so we need to encourage people to do more more healthy 
healthy um, lifestyle choices like walking, cycling. For children, children should be should play. Just go and tell them to play. Go and play outside. Go and jump. Go and run. Do your games. Do your 10-10 and all. But that's changing. More children are on in front of their devices on TV. So this is, I'm not saying take a child to the gym. Just let the child play. There's a requirement, an activity requirement for children and adults. For children, every child is supposed to be active at least um, one hour every day. Every child. Well, for mm -hmm. adults, about 150 minutes per week. So you can divide this into 30 minutes um, for at least five times a week. Mm -hmm. So that is, I'm not talking, of, I'm just mentioning this because you said exercise might be hard for some people. But if you walk, you, you walk around your house fast, briskly for 30 minutes every day without going to the gym. You can stay healthy, mm -hmm. of course, in addition to what you eat. Mm -hmm. So um, um, staying healthy is a balance of what you eat and your physical activity. So that has that is they are two they are part of, they are a twin that must be talked about together. I don't know if hello. what I've said is helpful. Hello, good morning. The caller is waiting. Okay. That is why I worry that many around me. to moses once again play the children must be they must do that that's what it is because they are children playing is part should be worked into their daily routine even adults too we need to play too but uh, let's get this into the would you be surprised if you see parents bringing children who should be playing to come begin to work on it have you had that case uh no but in the gym where I, where i go to there are some parents that bring their children to you know, do some form of activity at the gym, which which is is not bad at all. And another thing is that people people see exercise as difficult because they don't do what they what they love. They think being in the gym is the only you know form of exercise you can get. You can dance. Some people love to dance, and dancing is a very good um, form of exercise. You can walk. People underestimate walking. Walking is a very, very, very good way of exercising, especially if you live in a place that is, you know, that has hills and valleys and the rest of that. It's a very good form of um, exercise. Swimming, so many other things. Cycling. You don't have to be in the gym to be active. As, as, as little as getting up to, you know, climbing up the stairs at least 10 times is a form of exercise. So it doesn't have to be in the gym and then it, because the gym can be daunting. So make exercise fun and then you would not have any excuse whatsoever. It is still Lagos Talks 981. We expect your calls as we're getting ready to wrap up the conversation this morning on 01448-9981. We'd also be back to read messages if they're coming in. Oh, I see one in here uh, from a Mecca, from Ikeja, I guess. It says, uh, are the hormonal influence pregnancy that aids overweight and obesity? We'll get to that on the other side. Love music. 
Everyone is a winner in the AXA Award Extra and Double Protection promo. Get free home insurance when you buy a comprehensive motor insurance from AXA and stand a chance to win up to 100,000 Naira gift vouchers, phones, and other amazing prizes when you buy AXA third party motor insurance. Hurry now, call 0700 AXA Mansa or visit axamansa.com to get started. Terms and conditions apply. AXA Mansa, you know you can. To cook correct food, we always keep it joy. After one, anytime where they cook like this, I be always sitting and with no queue. Go add correct vegetables inside. Fugu, tatasheo, shombo, onions. I don't want to know the food. I make my picking them. They always enjoy my cooking. Daddy, I never will have food. I want more. You see, I'm not all your food with correct vegetables. Come sitting and with no queue. But that will both get delicious things. Today, My name is Theo Gates. I'm your boss. And you're listening to Smooth Breakfast. It is still Lagos Talks on Smooth 98.1 FM. Still looking at all of the issues relating to fat and how they affect us, and that's all you need to know. So before now, we've got a message in from Emeka from Ikeja, and this is directed to you, Dr. Anire. And she's and he's asking, are there hormonal influence, i.e. pregnancy that aids overweight and obesity? That's regarding to women now, if that should be a factor. Okay, um, thank you for that question. Yes, generally hormones um are very important. They regulate our metabolism and how our body works. Um, so certain hormones can affect our, our weight in terms of, um, hormones like insulin, leptin, ghrelin, estrogen. Okay. So there are hormones that work, um, in favor of gaining weight. When, when that hormones are high in your body, there's a tendency to store more fat, store more that can lead to weight while there are certain hormones that when they are there, they reduce such things. So, um, pregnancy during pregnancy, estrogens are released, progesterones are yes, you tend to add weight. However, it's not really a big issue in the discussion about obesity and and overweight. We do know that yes, certain hormones can, but it's something that after you can deal with easily. When you're talking about overweight and obesity, it doesn't really contribute so much to that picture. It's not a it's not a big it's not a big issue, really. Okay. So yes, in as much as yes, certain hormones can is something that can be managed. And usually the hormones are not um and they are not um, permanent, like insulin resistance. People that have diabetes, they may tend to be overweight. So these are things you need to go and talk to your doctor about. And you have certain symptoms that will tell you that, oh, you're having a hormone problem. But the way hormones are right now, they are not really an issue. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to now start thinking that, oh, because maybe because my hormones are, it's my hormones that's contributing to my weight. No, no. There will be other symptoms that point to that. Generally in the obesity overweight discussion, your diet, your activity are the key players. And then, yes, hormones a small quantity, but that is something that there will be other symptoms and it can be dealt with. All right. Hormones are smiling right now, but let's move on. They've been let off the hook. <laughs> don't, don't, bring your, don't bring your obesity to us, as doctors mentioned now. So uh, let's come <laughs> to you, the, the trainer. For us, let's look at it from the agreement. There's this issue of men, women, this belly fat is an issue. It's not a sign of the bank account anyway. Let's, so are there some of these things, exercises you could talk about that can help us fix this? It, it's your diet that will fix it. Your diet is what will fix it. Forget about exercise when it comes to, um, you know, your yeah, waste. Yes, your diet is what you should first attack. So change your diet and then you start to see a difference before you now start thinking of, you know, exercising. 
then maybe as you're changing your diet, you're you're walking. That that is for walking is the first exercise I would say that you should look into if you want to reduce belly fat. But the first thing you have to do is change your diet. So this one is for both of you, doctor. What role can, if I really, since I'm overweight and I really want to get it done and I want to see drastic results, can I go into fasting? <laughs> starving. Let's say starving. Uh, let's use starving now. Starve myself. Okay. Um, okay. There's something called intermittent fasting and all that, which has a role to play. However, as a doctor, I would always um, recommend things that are sustainable. How long can you fast for? When you stop fasting, you now go back to the way you are eating. It will come back. Exactly. (laughs) So you can, yes, you want quick results. And there's a way to do the fasting that can also be healthy and sustainable. Mm -hmm. So um, there can be periods where you don't eat. That's where people that eat late, they tend to gain weight. They're always eating. So there should be a period where your body is your your is free. Mm-hmm. So from don't we sell you don't eat after seven. So you if you want to practice fasting as a way to lose weight, you can have periods where you don't eat from say seven in the night to say eleven in the morning, and then you give your body um so there'll be hunger. And then hormones are released that cause fats to be broken down and all that. So if you can sustain that, it may help. But that you want to go into a prolonged fasting of 20 days, 30 days, 11 days, is not sustainable. So I don't recommend using fast. You, it can. It's an intermittent fasting. If you work with it, if you, if you know how to, okay, um, from this time to this time, I will not eat. That's the principle behind saying don't eat after seven. Don't eat late. Mm. But that is a prolonged issue. I will fast for three days, four days, and then I will stop and go back to how I used to do uh, it before it, it won't work. Okay, it's I rephrase. I take it back. Now I rephrase again. Let's go. If three yeah. square meals, let's say now decide to eat just once or twice a day, would that do any, would there be any impact oh, if fasting yes, is? Oh, yes. There will be a great impact. Um, I also want to talk about this eating thing. Yeah. These three square meals, we are, it's children that should eat three Where square meals. Where did we meals. get and this from? Exactly. We're eating three square meals. You're not growing anymore. Mm-hmm. You're not growing sideways. You're not mm-hmm. growing up. up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the food is, we should eat. So if you really want to be healthy, you don't need three square meals, to be honest. Two good meals, your breakfast, your dinner is good enough. And then if you're hungry, you can have a snack. When I mean snack, a fruit snack in between. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about what you should start doing. A lot of foods we eat. When we're talking about diet, there's a way your diet should be. There's something called my healthy eating plate, my healthy plate. Half of our food should be made up of fruits and vegetables. Half of the other food should be made up of um, your carbohydrates or um, healthy carbohydrates with good grains, whole grains, and proteins. So there's a way, there's a whole, it's a whole, um, it's a whole topic of how yeah. to eat. <laughs> okay. So if I know, I'll let to go over now to speak with um, Anadu. Anadu, in the final, in conclusion of this matter, what can we talk about in terms of exercises and making sure that when you build up all of, I've seen people with muscles, but what really happens when, as you won't grow old, does those muscles, when they turn into fat eventually? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not it's not it's not as easy as you think it, it, it won't turn into fat unless you're not doing anything you know unless you're not doing anything then you gain fat you know but building muscle even as women is very important because it helps you you know with your bones it makes your bones stronger it makes your body stronger so building muscle is 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 what i say must yeah and I'm not talking yeah. of, you know, the one that would look make you look like Hulk Hogan or anything. No, building muscle, lean muscle is also something women should should start lifting weight. So, doctor, in conclusion of this matter, is, yeah, we, shed, so- we, shed, we shed weight, build muscles or gain muscle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stre- stre- she's tra- talking about strength training. Yes. As part of your training. exercise. Yeah. Yes, as part of your exercise routine, you should do something for your heart which are the aerobics, the walking, the swimming, the and then something to build your muscles, strength training, to build your strength. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then we should eat healthy, eat healthy, mm-hmm. eat mm-hmm. lots of fruits and vegetables. We don't eat enough fruits and vegetables in, in Nigeria. I'm, I'm even a culprit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of our diet. We don't like to eat fruits. Instead, in, in parties, we do small chops. 
This vegetable, uh, this vegetable, I hope pe people won't think about once I eat as much as I eat the afang or probably maybe enough ugu that covers what vegetable doctor is talking about. I'm talking about things like um, afang is good. Uh, those are uh, yes. vegetables mm -hmm. too. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. the problem with those kind of diets it's is that you're not spoiled by putting too much palm oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so we have to... Okay, we have to... We have to so leave it here now. Exercise and you can curb obesity and being overweight. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's the size of it all this morning. We've been talking about obesity, all you need to know. And our guest this morning has been Dr. Anira Jurishe Chima Oduko. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you for having me. And also we've got here in the studio, Ifi Anadu, plus size fitness trainer. You've got handles where people can reach you after this show. Probably they've got, they want to take mm -hmm. this conversation further. Yeah. Uh, let's start with yeah. Dr. Leave it. Okay, on Instagram, I'm Dr. Anire, D-R-O dot A-N-I-R-E, Dr. Anire. And? On Instagram, I, I am, I am fit to be me, I-A-M-F-I-T-T-O-B-E-M-E, -E. I am fit to be me. And that's the size of the Smooth Breakfast this morning on Smooth 98.1 FM. My name is Omasheye Ashinua. Good morning. Thank you for listening on this Bye.